Hello. Hi, Mrs. Jennings. Yes. Hey there, it's Roy from the post office. Yes. And I just needed to let you know that you need to upgrade your mailbox before August 31st. What's you're, the matter with it? Well, it's not going to work anymore because we're not delivering mail anymore. It's all going to come to your to your e-box. Who am I speaking to? My name is Roy. I'm from the post office. The post office isn't going to deliver mail anymore? No, no, not to that type of mailbox. No, you have to get a new e-box. It's like a screen with a keyboard on it, and you'll mount it outside your uh, outside your door on the porch. And uh, any mail you get, it'll just come up on the screen. You can s- stand out there and read it. you got to be kidding. No, of course not. You know, most people don't even use mail anymore. I hardly believe what you're saying. Why don't you? Wh- I've not heard this at all. Oh yeah, it's been on the news. You haven't? You don't watch the news? Yes, I do. Oh well, I don't know. I'm surprised you haven't heard about this. Yeah, you have to get a new e-box. The the mailbox out at the street isn't used anymore. No, we're gonna get rid of those. Nope. Yeah, we're we're just we're not gonna deliver mail anymore. It's too expensive. We have to maintain all those trucks and pay people Here, to drive oh, around. Let me, let, would you do me a favor and would you tell my husband this? Oh yeah, I'd love to. Okay, hold on. Hello? Hey there, is this Jack? Yes, it is. Hey, it's Roy from the post office. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling your wife about um, how you need to upgrade your mailbox before August 31st, because your old mailbox isn't going to work anymore. Upgrade it to what? To an e-box. Don't tell me you you, you haven't heard of the e-box either. No, I sure haven't. Oh, wow. Okay, well, yeah, it's it's an electronic mailbox, and um, it'll have a screen and a keyboard, and whenever you get uh, mail, we'll just scan it in, and it'll show up on that screen out on your porch. Oh, yeah? Yep. And, and you're, with the, you're with the Postal Service, huh? Yeah, with St. Charles, the post office. Why are you calling us? We're in Warrington. I know. I'm calling everyone in the area. I'm just we we're supposed to let everyone know who hasn't gotten who hasn't upgraded yet. Yeah, well, so I don't know what to say. That's the first I've heard of that. Oh man, you guys must live under a rock. Yeah, we sure do. You know, your wife had never heard of it either. Yeah, you need to upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Just go to Walmart or a hardware store or anything, and just get one of those new e boxes. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you? Uh, what is this? Some kind of game? You got this much time? What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Why would you call me and tell me I need? How do you know I don't have an e box? Well, because we've checked and, and we know everyone that. Ha- how do you check? Uh, checked how? The 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 post office, the delivery man. He tells us if someone doesn't have an e box. Oh, he, he <laughs> writes it on a report. Oh my god. Okay, we'll 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 rush right over to Walmart and pick up an e box. Why is that so funny to you? Are are you just not ready for the twenty first century? Yeah, we're ready, pal. Well, it doesn't sound like you are. If you don't even have an e box yet, most people have had those for yeah. years. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's got one. I see them everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, well, I wish I had the time you had to, for this, but uh, unfortunately, I don't. What the time to do my job and call everyone and let them know the the people that are too lazy to upgrade, let them know that they need to upgrade. <sighs> let them know that we need to upgrade. You know, this is this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. So, in other words, you're saying you're saying that Warrington Post Office called you. And told you that the the uh, mail carrier, while he was scanning our box, noticed we didn't have an e an email system out oh, there no, on no, our the mailbox, box, right? Not email. It's totally different. It's not email. Yeah, just uh, just an e box. Okay. All we're doing is scanning your mail and putting it up on your screen. That's going to be outside on your porch. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Well, as soon as my mail doesn't deli- as soon as my mail doesn't show up every day in the mailbox, then I'll. Uh, Okay. And I'll rush you out and That's buy the way one. you want to do it. We'll probably start uh, fining you for not upgrading. 
because it's mandatory. Yeah, well, good for you. It's mandatory. You're gonna find me, huh? you're, You know, you're an idiot. You really are. How am I an idiot? You are a goddamn. Just, you're an idiot. I'm telling you the law. Oh fuck you! What? Why would you say that to me? I'm just doing my job. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Okay, bitch. Snowplow show. Roy. W- what? W- Roy. Okay, fucking dog. Steve Dave. Fucking dog. Oh fuck you, lady. Turnwinder. <laughs> okay. Go go go. Shaw go go. Blah 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 blah. Ma'am. Blue. Goodbye. Doubleina. Ma'am ma'am ma'am. Hello. Goodbye. Doppelina. Hello? How many fingers? Roy. Long shits on the toilet. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Hello? This is the grooming manager. How can I help you? Hello? Who, 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 who the hell are you? Steve Dave. No, 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 no. I, you're not making a lot of sense. Sense, sense, sense. Oh, my wiener. What the fuck is that? You don't say that word. You are some kind of asshole. Bob Doppelina. <laughs> Bob Doppelina. <laughs> No, 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 no. Fuck you, bitch. Have you ever been fucked in the ass? How dare you talk to this dog like that? Heard blinders? Fucked in the ass. Go, 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 shaw, go, 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 Ma'am. Goodbye. Dabalina. Ma'am. Ma'am. Hello. Goodbye. Dabalina. This is Sensei Doug. What? Sensei fucking Doug. Who's a good boy? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy, Westy? Is it you? Are you the good boy, Westy? Roy, Steve Dave, Rock Bob, Dabalina, go suck a dick. Roy, Steve Dave, Rock Bob, Dabalina, go suck a dick. Listen, Westy, you little shit. <laughs> Turnwinder? Okay. I think you're full of shit. I think you're full of shit. Cactus, 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 motherfucker. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Arby, and today's episode is sponsored by Nikki D. This is episode 435, and it's Sunday, January 28th, 2018. A quick thank you to all the new people on Patreon that have been signing up, like Darzazer and Cream Cancel and B.I. Eber for life, or is that Belieber for life? It's got a bunch of weird hyphens in it and stuff, probably just trying to confuse me. And then we've got Joseph F. and Adam F., and Sarah A. and Noel Pointer. Thanks, you guys, for signing up on the Patreon this month over at patreon.com slash phone losers. But don't think you're more important than Nikki D. He's the sponsor of today's show. You guys are a bunch of jerks for trying to take that away from him. Oh, yeah, Nathan Ol T. He signed up on the uh, Elite Cactus Squad over on phonelosers.org slash cactus. Some people still use that for some reason. I don't know why. It's weird. What the hell, Nathan Ol T. So first, an update. I got an important update here from NZ Cactus, which I guess means New Zealand Cactus. He says, greets from New Zealand, no grass, skirts to be seen, only sheep. Just in case you didn't know, those wacky messages, which you got those special Walmart employees to read out, are called Harvard Sentences, which are standardized test phrases for voice over IP and telephone, etc. And he is, of course, referring to this phone number that I've been calling lately for various things. The phone number is 858-651-5050. Here, let me call it up. After the dance, they went straight home. The hostess taught the new maid to serve. Adding fast leads to wrong sums. The show was a flop from the very start. Just the weirdest things. There was water in the cellar after the heavy rain. So we now know what that is, thanks to NZ Cactus. He gave me a couple links. One is to the Wikipedia for uh, Harvard Sentences which says the Harvard sentences are a collection of sample phrases that are used for standardized testing of voice over IP, cellular, and other telephone systems. They are phonetically balanced sentences that use specific phonemes at the same frequency they appear in English. Phonemes. I've never seen that word before. How do, I, I'm going I'm to get yelled at for that. I bet you I pronounced it wrong here. Let me look it up. Let me ask Google how to pronounce phoneme. Here's a YouTube video. Phoneme. Okay, maybe I got it right. Phoneme. All right, close enough anyway. And it's 72 lists of 10 phrases each, described as the 1965 revised list of phonetically balanced sentences. And then in parentheses, it says Harvard sentences. They are widely used in research on telecommunications, speech, and acoustics, where standardized and repeatable sequences of speech are needed. The Open Speech Repository provides some freely usable pre-recorded wave files of Harvard sentences in American and British English in male and female voices. I wonder if that's what we're hearing, or did MCI record their own? 
I don't care enough to look into that. But he also provided a link to every single one of the sentences, which, if I understood that correctly, it's like 720 sentences total. It's a pretty big list here. I'll put links to both of these things in the show notes. Thank you, NZ Cactus, for clarifying this for us and introducing us to the really cool-sounding phrase, phonetically balanced. You know what? From now on, when I do shows, I'm going to make sure every sentence I say is phonetically balanced. You guys probably won't notice, but don't worry. They will be. I'm a professional. I'm going to make sure. I think it's like writing a haiku. Next, we have some news that was submitted by Carson. This is a story from Canada. It says RCMP in the Halifax area had a little help in finding the alleged caller of a bomb threat. He left his caller ID on. According to the police, a business on Hammonds Plains Road in Upper Tantalon received the call just after 1 p.m. on Thursday. The target is a hardware store, and the call was a threat to blow the building up. The business was evacuated and searched by a police dog and the RCMP explosive disposal unit, but nothing suspicious was found. What police did have, however, was the alleged caller's name and phone number on the caller ID display. It assisted us significantly with our investigation and enabled us to identify a suspect without consuming a considerable amount of police time. They arrested a 49-year-old man from Bedford. Later in the day, the man is facing charges of criminal harassment, uttering threats, and false information. He's been released and will appear in court on February 27th. And I know that's a boring story, but I just think it's funny. And I guess Carson did too. It's like they're, they're talking about caller ID like it's this amazing new thing. Like maybe it is up in Canada, up in Halifax. Maybe they just got caller ID last year, but they seem really impressed with it. The police are like, holy crap, this new technology saved us so much time and work. We're going to have to use this shit more often. Reminds me of back in the day when caller ID just came out and the pizza places, they thought they were so clever getting caller ID. They're like, this is going to make a huge difference in the amount of fake pizza orders we get and prank calls and stuff. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, Henrik, uh, the guy that makes all those weird little songs that I play all the time on the beginning of shows and on the end of shows, or I guess everywhere in shows. But I've asked him a few times if he has some sort of a music page or anything like that that I could link people to because he makes so much cool shit for the show and he just does it for fun. And I think he told me he doesn't even usually make music. He just started doing it for, for the Snowplow show, which is crazy because he's pretty good at making weird little songs using clips of prank calls and stuff. So I'm going to completely take credit for him creating a Patreon account, which you can find by going to patreon.com slash almosthenrik. That's almost H-E-N-R-I-K. I'll have a link to it in the show notes. And he claims that for a $10 pledge, he will make you a personalized song like you hear on this show. So if you have your own show or if you just want to have a personalized weird little song for whatever reason, then this is a really good bargain. Ten bucks. He's totally getting ripped off just charging ten bucks for this. And he's using the Patreon to fund an album. He's going to make an entire album of songs. I assume not PLA songs, just, you know, his own stuff. So everybody go check that out. Patreon.com slash Almost Henrik. The link is in the show notes. I'm only pledging $5 a month to him because he already makes me songs for free. So fuck that $10 shit. But he had some sort of a reward in there for the $5 people too. Like he'll put you on his album or something like that. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Don't take my word for it. Just go to his Patreon. And speaking of Henrik's music, here's one of his songs before we get started with today's show. Pussy good. Pussy sweet. Pussy good. Tim Riggy has been bugging the shit out of me to do some time capsule calls. So I think I'm going to try and do some time capsule calls just so he'll shut the fuck up. I'm kidding, though. Like, it was more like a month ago he was bugging the shit out of me to do time capsule calls. And he sent me a big list of ideas here. And it seems like they mostly involve homeowners or homes or whatever. So I found a list. It's kind of a homeowner's uh, type list, but it's mobile homes. 
like not trailers, but you know, just the homes that are, are set down on a foundation. And if you get tired of where you live, you can pick it up and move it across town or whatever. You know, one of those things. Uh, this list was sent to me by uh, Raffaella, aka Giggy Girl, aka Ella. A lot of AKAs in there. It's very suspicious. And she sent this to me in um, 2016, May of 2016. So probably all the numbers are disconnected by now, but it's a big list. So I'll just keep at it until some of these pick up. Also, the list is kind of confusing because this is a Florida... Um, oh, it is a homeowner association. It says in the directory. It also says in the directory, first copy complimentary. Additional copies available for $2 each. And oh shit, it's a 2012 directory. Maybe this is a horrible idea. Anyway, it is some sort of a, a homeowners association, but all of the numbers, or like a lot of the numbers anyway, have out-of-state area codes. And this is a Florida thing, so maybe this is just like a place where people go to retire and they keep their phone numbers. I don't know. It's kind of confusing. I'm just going to call some numbers here, see if anyone picks up. Hello? Hi, uh, Debbie? Who's calling, please? Uh, this is Greg from Mobile Estates. Okay. And... I- Okay. Well, I just got this call from the city of Sarasota, and they're saying where your house is, uh, there's a time right. capsule buried underneath underneath where it is. Oh, hold on. Hold okay. On. All right. Fine. We don't. We don't. Somebody's writing because it's a time capsule under our trailer. Hello. Hi. Yeah. So, what's Debbie's problem? She had had kind of an attitude with me. She didn't have an attitude with you. We don't know who you are. Oh, I told her who I was. This is Greg from Mobile Estates. And and, and I was in the middle of telling her what was going on, and she just kind of trailed off and started talking to you. It's very rude. We don't own any place in the in estates. Mobile Estates. You know, the mobile home in Sarasota, you idiot. Hey, don't call me an idiot. We don't own a place there. I know you don't own it. Like, I, that, that's not even what I was trying to say. I, I wasn't claiming that you own anything. But you're what dumb. are you trying to say? Well, I was trying to tell your wife what I was trying to say, and, and she's just being a dumb bitch, and, and she started like talking to you and ignoring me. Like She didn't even let me get it out. You know? Oh, there he goes. I'm a little confused about this now. Hello? Okay, so the property of yours that we found, I'm just going to keep. If you're going to hang up on me, it's mine. You don't get it now. Whatever. What is, I don't care. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't have to tell you anymore. You know what? Forget it. It's mine now. I'm keeping it. It's mine. I don't even know who you are. I told you. Don't, you, don't I, sound, you don't sound like a person from mobile estates. Because most mobile estates people are extremely nice people. I was being nice, but your wife started being a jerk to me. But you know what? It doesn't even matter anymore. I'm keeping it. This is mine now. I'm taking it home. Well, you... You know what? There's people that own that place, I, and everything that was and everything that was there conveyed to them. Yeah, well, so whatever. If, you know? if you're taking something from that property, I will have to tell the people that own it. Well, it had Debbie's name on it, so I just figured it was hers. But whatever, it's mine now. Well, she, I, I tell you what, you what you would be doing is stealing. No, it's not because stealing. Everything, everything we had at that trailer. And things underneath the trailer and things in the back, all that stuff sold with the property. Yeah, but, you know, this, this it, it, had Debbie's, it had Debbie's name on it, but it's mine now, Finders Keepers. Like, I was going to offer to mail it back, but you know what? She was being kind of a jerk, and so are you. You're the one that's being a jerk. I, no, she started it. Debbie started it. <laughs> okay, he's gone again. And I kind of feel like I heard her say in the background something about a timeshare. So is this some kind of... Would there really be such thing as a timeshare mobile home? Do these people not actually own the properties? I guess they're not going to care about it if they don't actually own the properties. But like most of them have out-of-state area codes. So maybe it is something like that. Maybe it's a timeshare. Shitty as timeshare ever, though. I mean, I'm looking on Google Maps. They're not nice places. The number you have dialed is not in... They're just mobile homes. Hello. Hey, Mr. Anderson. Uh, he, this, there is no Mr. Anderson. What is it you want? Ah, uh, well, if you're not Mr. Anderson, I don't have to tell you. All right. Don't tell me then. Fine, I won't. Just watch. I'm just calling from Mobile Estates, that's all. Sorry. Crap, I guess he, he won that battle. Just hung up on me. I guess I should have asked for Mrs. Anderson because it's actually under a female's name. 
Oh, wait a minute. Now, okay, I just noticed on this directory that it actually has their address where their area code is located at. But these area codes are all over the place. They're like New York, Ohio, Vermont, Florida, West Virginia. Okay, it's all on the East Coast mostly. I don't see anything west of the Rockies. But that means I'm calling, I'm still calling though from... Oh. Oh, hey, Jose. No, Maria. Oh, hey, Maria. You have a man's voice. Uh, I'm calling from Mobile Estates here in Sarasota. Yes. And um, we found out from the city of Sarasota that um, there's a time capsule buried underneath your mobile home. Yeah. So we're going to have to uh, pick up your mobile home so we can unbury the time capsule because it's been 100 years now. And the, the city wants to, you know, they, they want to they wanna get the time capsule out and see what's in it. No, 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 no. You don't do nothing. Okay? Uh, no, no. We, have, we just have to pick up the home real quick and just get the time capsule out. It's no big deal. No, no, you don't. It, it, it's just 20 feet underground. We just have to pick up the house real quick. It's, no, you don't. It, it's a mobile home, so it's okay. No, you don't. <laughs> what do you mean, no, I don't? Okay, bye. But ma'am, ma'am, don't hang up. Crap, I should probably look at um, Tim Riggie's list. Per customer's request, the number you're calling is suspended. Whoa, that was a crazy error message. Per customer's <laughs> request, the number you're calling is suspended. And I didn't call it back there, it repeats by ringing. Is it going to do it again? Yeah, there it goes. Customer's request. The number you're... Yeah, that's pretty weird. Hello? Hello, uh, Mr. Barnes? Yes? Hey, it's Steve Dave from the Mobile Estates here in Florida. Yes, yeah, Steve. Hey, you know this house thing you have here? Yeah. Um, We found out that there's a time capsule buried underneath it that was buried there uh, 100 years ago. Bullshit. No, for real. Not a hundred years ago. Why do you say that? Because the place is not that old. I know it was buried before this was a place. Dur. You know, like they, they it, there was like a plantation here or something, and they they buried it <laughs> underneath. You know where your house is now. You know, I, I I don't know who you are, and I told, I've never heard of you before. I told you who and I am. That, well, that don't make no difference. I still don't know who you are. Why are you so but suspicious? That, that, Pardon? Why are you so suspicious of me? Because uh, a lot of people, you know, they're scammers. They want this kind of stuff. And that is a field back there anyway. So it couldn't have been buried in there no, 100 years ago. You, you, look, come on, Florida existed 100 years ago. Don't you know how old Bye. the country is, dummy? Uh-oh. Hello? Mr. Bar- are, are you are you talking to me still, Mr. Barnes? I think he thinks he hung up. He's t- Hello. Washington. Your, your mom's Pasco, Washington. That's what it says. Mr. Barnes? He definitely thinks he hung up. I suppose he was wanting to know if he could get in there and dig in underneath it. If wasn't getting some kind of thing. Wow. That's, oh, there he goes. I thought we were just going to listen to Mr. and Mrs. Barnes for the rest of the show. And I'm confused. He kept saying I was in Pasco, Washington. And I, I know I'm dialing from Florida. Like, here, I'm going to call my cell phone right now. 
Just confirm. Ah, shit. How? What? what that, that. <laughs> it says Washington. Why does it say Washington? Okay, this is weird. This this doesn't make sense at all. I'm going to reboot my asterisk machine. Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. I see. I was on the wrong. I have like two caller ID things now, so I can switch between two different um, caller IDs easily. And it looks like I was calling from 509 on this other one. Okay, it's it's switched. I, I've switched it. Maybe that's why I haven't been getting a lot of answers. You guys don't know that I haven't been getting a lot of answers, but I have not been getting a lot of answers. I'm sure I'm going to edit those all out. But it's okay. Now we're going to get more answers because I'm going to be calling from Florida. I'm not going to be one of those scammers from Washington. I don't know how I made that mistake. I've never made that mistake before. Getting the two caller ID change-o-matics confused. And yeah, I'm going to look at Tim's list now. Um, so uh, yeah, Tim wants me to call from the Comptroller's office or a subsidiary of the Comptroller's office, like the office of the Council for City Time Capsule Affairs. Wow, this is really complicated. I don't know. I'm just going to dial numbers and I'll, I'll read it as I go along. I'll read the ideas as I go along. What could go wrong, right? Hello? Hello, Normand? Who? Normand. Uh, you have the wrong number. Oh, this isn't Marie and Normand? Uh, if I told you you had the wrong number, then obviously it's not. Hey, don't be a dick, sir. I- I'm just calling to-, to talk to Normand. Yeah, well, you're wrong, so see you later. Oh, you're wrong. You're just lying to me. You're uh, Okay, there he goes. I guess that number's been changed since 2012. Hello. Oh, hello, Victor? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Victor, this is Steve Dave. I'm with the Sarasota Comptroller's Office. With the Sarasota what? The Comptroller's Office. Hey, did they tell you there at Mobile Estates that there was a time capsule buried underneath your your home? Uh, No, I don't own a home there. Oh, um, like, is it, what is it, a timeshare or something? I sold it a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Well, look, um, we know that you dug down and, and you stole that time capsule that was located underneath there, and we need that back. Uh, I didn't even know anything was there. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Well, we found, we noticed that they noticed that there was a hatch in one of your closets and that you dug straight down and, and retrieved the time capsule. And that's been there for like a uh, hundred. That was that wasn't me. I don't even own that property. I know, but it probably happened while you still owned it. And you know that time capsule that belongs to the city, the city of Sarasota. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, you know I only went there in the winter. Mm-hmm. That that I was only there two or three months in the winter but, for a few years, and I didn't even know that was there. Well, I don't know because I don't know. They found that trap door after you left. And then there was a, a large a hole dug down about 20 feet where the time capsule was buried. I so, have no idea. Look, could, t- which lot are you talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. Six. And look, there's not. There, no, I, I'm I, sure you I know. Have, no, I've never di- dug under there. I'm we sure. Sold, we sold that because of the fruit wraps that we're getting in. Oh, yeah, those damn fruit wraps. Yeah, but, from the restaurants and that. Yeah, uh, we couldn't come down there any longer. But uh, I'm really sorry. I wish I did know something about it. If I had done it, I'd certainly give it back to you. Oh uh, well, but I what? don't. I don't know who would. Uh, it'd have to be the people after us. Can, can you just like? Uh, can you just admit it though? I mean, just just confess. It's fine. You know, there's nothing valuable in there. It's it's like if you have it, can you just please give it back? <laughs> I told you I would sure give it to you. I have no idea what you're talking about, really. Yeah, but that's something that the, the, the thief would say, a time capsule thief. Well, I tell you, a person who's innocent says it, too. It just, uh, I had no idea anything was there. Yeah, well... well I what? never dug a hole in that place the full 10 or 15 years I lived there. Why were you digging the hole in the first place if you didn't know the time capsule was there? Did you just kind of stumble across it while you were digging the hole? I've never dug any hole. But no, we found the, the hole. The only thing we I did, did was put a bottom on it around there about three or four inches down so oh, that the oh, uh, yep. Here we go. <laughs> so that the rats wouldn't get in. Yeah, but then you started digging the hole and and uh, cuz you know we talked to the neighbors and they said you would come out of your house sometime and sometimes you'd be covered in dirt. They thought it was very peculiar. 
Uh, they're not talking about me. Uh, yes, they were. They they, not, they no, said your they're name. They're not talking about they, me. Yep. I, I hired a bathroom done by someone because I couldn't even put a bathroom floor in. So you hired a man to dig the whole floor. Some years you. old. Did you blindfold him before you brought him to your house so he wouldn't know where you lived? I was. I wasn't there. I was. I live up in Illinois. Then how how do you know that the guy doing your bathroom didn't steal it? Well, I have no idea. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, even if he stole it, you funded it. You paid for it, so it's kind of your responsibility. Can can you get a hold you of it? You know, the- I'm going to have to end this. You're going to have to do something legal because I absolutely don't know what you're talking about. Oh, there, we're not going to do anything legal. We just think it's kind of a bummer that you stole the city of Sarasota's time capsule. It's 100 years old. There was, like, a lot of history in there. You know, I'm very sorry that you feel that way, but I really do not have it. I wouldn't even know what to do with a time capsule. I know. Like, there's nothing valuable in there. Just just a bunch of old papers and stupid things like that. Huh. I, I, I don't know. What good would it do anybody to have it? That's what I want to know. Place. You know, if you're going to dig a large hole and and just to steal something, why, why not? You know, tunnel under a bank. Now, or where something? do you claim? Where do you claim it was at? Where, uh, it was. Uh, it was about 15 feet underneath your home. Where at though? In a bedroom? In a living room? Oh, why, one why? of the closets. It looks like you 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 installed a trap door in one of the closets, and that's where you oh, did your heavens, digging. No. Yeah, uh-huh. no. no, we we, uh, we found all the evidence, and we found um we we found your old library card. It was in the bottom of the hole, like you dropped it there by accident. I have no idea. Like you accidentally, uh, you know, I you, have you, a library card there, but I got rid of that a long time ago. Well, no, you didn't get rid of it. You accidentally lost it in the in the hole that you were digging. We found it in the bottom of the hole where the time capsule should be. Was your old library That's card? Weird. I find this conversation really weird. Well, uh, the only thing I did is you caused it. years and years ago, the rats were coming up into the bedroom, and Here I lifted the carpet on one corner and put a piece of plywood there mm-hmm. and covered it back. Some guy in Sarasota said, I dug up a time capsule underneath our trailer out there, and they found my library card. And they want me to return it. I don't even know what they're talking about. I bet you if I talk to Denise, she would admit it. Oh, hey, if she talks to you, you're going to admit it. Who is this? Denise, can you, can you and your husband just come clean? We know you took the time capsule. We, we found the hole. We found, we found Victor's library card. Just, just, come on, there was nothing valuable in there. This belongs to the city of Sarasota. It's it's just a bunch of worthless stuff from the 1920s. Denise, hello? Hello? Denise? I asked who this was. Oh, my name is Steve Dave. I'm with the city of Sarasota. I'm in the comptroller's office. I work with the uh, the office for the council of the city time capsule affairs, and you know that time capsule doesn't belong to either of you. You need to give it back. Trying to see the number for mobile estate. It uh, it looks like the number for mobile estate. Yep, um, yep. I figured out the call ID thing. Four thirty eight hundred. Yes. Denise, you're being very rude. You're not talking to me. Quit being rude. Well, we don't own anything in Sarasota, so you're much mistaken. Yeah, oh, no, you used to. Okay, there she goes. Damn it, Denise being all sensible and stuff. I think I'm going to stop using this directory for this idea because, I don't know, it, it just doesn't work. Because we want them to think that the time capsule is buried underneath the home that they actually live in. And it messes it all up that these people are all out of state and most of them don't even own the properties anymore. I think this list could be really good for something else, though. So thank you, Raffaella, a.k.a. Giggy Girl, a.k.a. Ella, for this list. I'm sure you don't even listen anymore, but thanks for the list. I will definitely come back to this one for something else. I need to find another list, though, that has, uh, you know, current homeowners. Maybe a church directory. Here's a golf directory that was sent to me by someone named Gerbil. 
back in late 2016, but it looks like it was a brand new directory at that time, and it contains addresses of the people, so yeah, let's try a few of these, see how they work out. This is some kind of a golf club, I guess. There's not a whole lot of information about it. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Blue. Yes. Hey, uh, this is Steve Day from the Comptroller's office here in Chicago. From where? And, well, I'm from the Comptroller's office. It's with Arlington Heights. Okay. And, and um, we have kind of a problem here. It looks like there's a time capsule buried underneath your house. It was buried there about 100 years ago. So, and it's, it's, due, to get, um, it's due to get dug up this year. It looks like it's... Yeah, no, that's not happening. Oh, no, it's just directly under your driveway, so we're going to have to tear up your driveway and part of your garage? No, that's not happening. No, it has to. Look, this thing is from 1920, and we have to dig it up. That's, that's what you do with time capsules. She hung up. But apparently it is not happening. Okay, hello? Hey, uh, Mr. Blue. What? Hey, Mr. Blue, your wife hung up on me. Uh, she disagreed with what I... I know. Well, you're not digging up our driveway or our, our garage. No, silly. we have to. It's for a time capsule. They buried this there. You don't have to. I don't care what the fucking reason is. You're not digging up my garage. They, they put it there 100 years ago. Oh, he hung up too. Okay, I give up on those people. This is pretty good, though. That was just the second number on the list. The first one didn't pick up. So maybe we'll have a good success rate with this. Yes. Hello, Larry? Yes. Hey, this is uh, Steve Dave from the Chicago Comptroller's office. And um, we're we're from who? I'm I'm from the Comptroller's office. We're calling about um, your your property there on Harbor Drive. And were you aware that there was a time capsule buried underneath your house? The hell are you talking about? Uh, well, you live on <laughs> Harbor Drive, correct? Yes. And there's a time capsule that was buried uh, below your house, about 20 feet below your house. And it's, it's, uh, it's 100 years old. It was due to be dug up. So we went in sideways, though. We didn't want to, like, make you move your house or anything, so we sent someone down there, dug a tunnel, and they're, they're like, below your house. You make know? me move my house? Well, what you know. What kind of bullshit is this? Well, no, we're, we're not going to make you move your house. We came in sideways. We, you know, we used uh, a... I'm not moving my house for nobody. I, we're, I get a bullet in your ass. I'm... Tell, no, we wouldn't. We're with this. Four thirty on Sunday. What kind of bullshit is this? No, we tried to call during the week and you didn't answer. Seems like you're dodging our calls. Fuck you, but, sir. What, why would you say? What the? What, what was that about? Man, I, I had something all planned out, and and wow. I mean, I told him he didn't have to move his house. Why is he? Why is he freaking out? Threatening to shoot me and stuff. Holy shit. Hello. Hey, I, I need to just let you know about something, okay? Is that okay? Like you're not going to threaten to shoot me again, are you? I don't I don't put up with bullshit calls. Okay, it's not a bullshit call, sir. I'm I'm with the city. I'm with the comptroller's office. Well, comptroller's office of what? Of, of Lake Zurich. Listen, um, there's... Comptroller's office don't call people about... Moving your homes and things buried. We're not going to move your home. We decided not to do that. Fuck you. You give me a million bucks, you can move it. N listen, no, we don't need to move your home. I'm not calling to say you have to move your home. Don't be an idiot. Why don't you come over here I'll kick you right into your fucking ass. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I, it's, you sound like a wimp. C can I tell you why I'm... One call from you, it's going right to the police department, can okay? I, can I tell you why I'm calling? No. Why not? No. Oh. Get, get lost. Look, we know you stole the, the time like capsule. The you, you stole it, and you need to give it back. Because we went down there, and Excuse it's... Me? We, we went down there, the time capsule's missing. We know you stole it. You need to give it back. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, you know, that you're a thief. Man, that, that guy. <laughs> what the hell was that? He's so pissed off. He's pissed off over nothing. I bet you he's a horrible father to have. Man, people who golf, they have no time for bullshit. Hi, it's Paul. Hey, Paul. Uh, this is Steve Dave from the city of Chicago. I'm in the Palatine uh, Comptroller's office. Uh-huh. 
And I was calling about your uh, your home there on Park Drive. Did you know there's a time capsule buried underneath it? No. Yeah, yeah, it was buried. Well, I mean, it used to be there. Um, it was buried about 100 years ago. And, underneath uh, the house? Yeah, yeah, it's, it was buried there in uh, uh, 1919. Or, I'm sorry, 19, wow. 1918. They're, they're going to dig it up this year. And they were talking about like um, possibly making you move your house, but we decided to go in sideways instead. From one of our, from one of the uh, the drainage tunnels. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not you go through the uh, living room floor. That wouldn't be as no. Wouldn't be so oh no. Well, well, okay. There is the problem. Uh, we 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 went in sideways, and we went to where it's supposed to be, and it's missing. And we noticed that there's a tunnel going straight up to your house, and then there's a trap door. Oh, you got to be kidding me, right? No, no, I'm not kidding. So basically, we know that you've taken it you've taken the time capsule we don't know why because there's <laughs> nothing valuable in there who is this who is this my name is steve dave i'm with the palantine comptroller's office you gotta be kidding me because uh if you want to come over and show me the trap door i'd be happy to take a look at it uh no we're, we're not letting you down there we don't let thieves down in our tunnels but it's a tunnel leading directly up to your house so we know it was yeah, you well I mean, I have no idea. The first I heard about it was now, and I wasn't the original owner of the house. There's been a couple owners. I mean, it's interesting. But yeah, well, th- this is recent. This is recent, though, and um, we. How do you know? We're, but well, for one thing, you dropped your library card, like right next to where the the time capsule used to be. Well, I don't think that's the case. Does it say Paul on it? Yeah, it does. So well, I have my library a, card, so how can that be? Seems a little weird. It seems a little suspicious. You're saying you didn't do it, but here where the thing's missing is your library card. Yeah, well, it seems a little odd to me, too, because I've got my library card. You know, you're not, you, you have to have a permit to, to dig giant tunnels below your house, too. You can't just dig a 20-foot tunnel straight down from the bottom well, of your house. <laughs> I think somebody had noticed that I dug a 20, 20 foot title, uh, tunnel. But I have not dug any twenty foot tunnels. I promise. Well, no, it's it's straight down. It's vertical, and, and it leads up to a some sort of a trap door that's locked. We tried to open it. Well, if there was a trap door, I think I'd know about it. And there's none that I can see in the house. So you're sure you po- got the right house? Oh, I'm positive it's the right house because we went in right behind your house through one of the drainage tunnels. So look. Well, come on in. Come on over and take a look. I mean, I, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Are Are you home right now? Uh, we can send someone up there and start knocking on the trap door. You'll You'll hear it. You'll know it's for us. You'll You'll know it's us. Well, for real. I'll, I'll be here for another half hour, or so I'm painting. But you're welcome to, you know, come over in the next half hour, or so. What are you painting? Is it in the basement? Do Do you have I'm a permit? Painting a, a permit. Yeah, yeah. What kind of crazy renovations are you doing now? Is it like painting a like an entrance for another tunnel or something? <laughs> well, it's, in this case, I'm painting a bedroom, and uh, the only entrance is into the hallway in the closet. Seems kind of suspicious. Seems like the trap door is like <laughs> in the back of your house, somewhere in the back of your house. Like, where no, you, there's where, no trap doors. Well, I mean, I've lived here for 30 years. I've never seen a trap door. I mean, it's kind of a cool story, and I wish it were true, but um, oh, we no know trap it's true. doors that I'm aware of. Look, there's nothing valuable in the time capsule. Why can't you just give it back? Why can't you just admit it and give it back? You're not in any, any trouble for that. You're just going to be. You're just going to be charged. <laughs> Come on, seriously. Do you think I dug a twenty foot hole? How would I know about the time capsule in the first place? Because it was in the I mean, papers. This obviously, got to be a joke. No, it was in the papers. Who is it? it was in the papers a hundred years ago. It's easy to find out about it. Who is this? Uh, my, I've told you two times already. This is Steve Day from the Comptroller's Come office. Come on. Come on. Who is this? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you a fourth time. <laughs> well. <laughs> Whoever it is, it's a good prank, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I, I don't believe you. I'm glad you think this is all just a big fucking joke, but you know, you'll, you'll know it's not a joke when you get a fine in the mail for this digging without a permit thing. All right. Well, and send me the fine then. You, you left your... There's no, your, your, there's, there's no holes in the in the yard. I haven't dug down 20 feet. Leaving I your mean, library card at the ridiculous. scene of the crime, you idiot. I, I, I have my library card, so... Well, you must have had another have one. Mine. You must have had two I library cards. I've had the same library card for 20 years. So, yeah, that's something a um, time I've capsule thief. Card. That's something a time capsule thief would say. <laughs> Everada, there's a guy on the phone saying there's a time capsule underneath the house since 1919. I mean, it's kind of cool. Well, I don't know. They said it's missing, and then I dug 20 feet down and took it. Yeah, let me talk yeah, to her. Maybe she'll I admit know. to it. Here, here, talk to her. 
Hi. Hi. Look, can you just have him admit admit that he did this? Because we just want the time capsule back. You guys aren't in any trouble. It's technically not illegal. It's just kind of a dick move. Really? You think he dug down 20 feet? Well, we know he did because that we we're, we're like underneath your house right now. There's a tunnel really? that goes 20 feet up. You're underneath... Really, you're underneath our house in a tunnel. We're twenty. We're twenty feet underneath your house. We we came in sideways well, through gotta, a drainage. Yeah, you can't find it. Well, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, you know what? You're as full of shit as as Paul is, and and yeah. you're just okay. a, a whole All right. okay, bye-bye. family of criminals. It's amusing. All right. Well, it's been fun talking with you. I've got to get back to painting. All right. I love Good you. Good luck with the time capsule. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'm thinking Paul wasn't buying it, you guys. But he liked my story. That's all that really matters. He liked the story. That's what we're really here for, right? Is to tell stories and entertain people. So even if you, the listeners, you weren't entertained by that story, at least Paul was entertained. I entertained somebody. That's the important thing. He's probably painting over his hatch door or something, so it couldn't be found. And what the hell? I found two people that actually have library cards. That's pretty crazy. And man, Paul seemed a lot more easygoing than those other two people I talked to from this golf directory. I'm starting to think that all golfers were assholes. Oh, I was calling for Eric. Did I get the wrong number? Ah, uh, yes, you did. Fuck. <laughs> shit, fuck. You know. What? I said shit, fuck. Oh, no. No, I'm not Eric. Uh, he might have had this number before because I keep getting calls for him. Ah, it, it's just like him. He's like dodging creditors and stuff. Oh, boy, that's it. That fucking, that fucking... <laughs> no, this is a home health service. Okay. Okay, thanks. You don't live on Pepper Tree Drive? No, I do not. Don't lie. No. Look, don't lie. Are you just trying to cover for Eric? No, sir. This is a home health agency you're calling on the triage. Well, that, that seems very suspicious that you'd even be open on a Sunday. Are you sure you're not just a big liar? Because I'm on triage. Please don't call Yeah, again. I don't know what the fuck, the fuck a triage is, ma'am. I, I just... Okay, what's a triage, you guys? I'm not educated. I don't know these things. I don't think it'd be open on a Sunday, though. Oh, hey, look at this. So... Um, you know, the, I'm, this list is directly from some kind of a golf website, and in the URL it said 2016. I just changed the 2016 into a 2017. Wait, let's see if there's a 2018. Nope, there's not a 2018. But anyway, I changed it to a 2017, and it says um, this is the member directory as of January 2018. So I may end up calling some people that I've already called, but at least now I'm calling a more updated directory. I'm going to try and skip down to where I was. I'll, I'll miss a few of these, but whatever. Oh, and some of these people, it says unpaid. Like, <laughs> they are like they're need to pay their dues for the golf club. Maybe I'll just call as the golf club. Yeah, hello. Hello, Russ. Yes. Hey, this is Steve Dave from the Rolling Meadows Comptroller's office. Yeah. And um, did you know that there is a time capsule? Um, it's buried underneath your house. No way. Yeah, yeah, there is a time capsule. It looks like it's pretty much right in the center of your house. And that was right. buried there about 100 years ago. And it's due to be dug up this year. No way. Yeah, what do you mean no way? And I'm completely serious, sir. So I'm I'm just I'm supposed to call and let you know that we're gonna have to dig we're gonna have to um I guess we can just go into your house and come in like it looks like it might be in the living room area. Yeah, well, just, I don't think so. No, it's just six feet down. It's not a big deal, and we'll pay to have your carpet redone. It's not a, you know you don't have to pay for anything. We'll do all the work, but it's it's uh, been down there a hundred years, and it's time for that to be pulled up. So the sure. I, I tell you what, have my alderman give me a call. Uh, no, no, I won't. I, I'm just calling to let you know, like, you, you don't get to debate this or anything, sir. This this time capsule is underneath your house. If you didn't want this right. to happen, you, you shouldn't can, have you built... You can talk. You can, you, can have, you can have my alderman give me a call, and then we'll talk to my attorney, and you forget it. Oh, okay? no, 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 it's, it's, it's happening. Look, you shouldn't have built your house there if you didn't want this to happen. 
Yeah, really. Well, have my alderman give me a call. Have, have Michael Cannon give me a call. Why don't Why don't you call him yourself if you're so you know buddy no, buddy I, with I the guy? No, I think you should call him. No, I think you should do it, and and you'll find out how useless that is because we're coming to your house, and we're going to be digging. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure you are. Oh, we Take definitely are, motherfucker. Hello. Hi, Bill. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Palatine. Okay, hi, and, Steve. Hey there. Uh, I'm calling to let you know. Like, did you know there's a time capsule buried underneath underneath your house? No, I did not know that. Yes, it was. Uh, it looks like it was buried there about a hundred years ago, and it's due to be dug up this year. It was buried there in 1918. Okay. And we're going to need um, access to come into your house. And it looks like it's right around the front middle. Looks like it's probably the living room area, according to these blueprints here. And you're not going to have to pay for anything. I'm sorry, what? This must be a joke, right? I mean, this is, no. you're pulling my leg on this. Oh, no, no. Oh, I, I wouldn't joke about something like this. It's just, uh, you know, it's got to be done. Hey, look, look, can you tell those kids in the background to shut up? What's that? No, it's, I won't. I won't do that. I'm, I, you're calling me on my weekend. Yeah, but it's it's hard to hear you because those kids are being so fucking loud. I, I, I can hear them loud. I can hear you fine. I know, but it's hard to hear you. It's hard to concentrate. Can you just, like, tell them to shut the fuck up? I, no, I won't do that, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Where are you where, what do you mean you're going to see me? Okay. He wasn't buying it anyway. Okay, let's look at Tim Riggie's idea list. I'm just doing the same thing over and over. A time capsule whose only contents were hundreds of smaller time capsules? What the hell is Tim Riggie smoking? Say you dug up a time capsule and in it was a treasure map with their phone number on it, and you are tunneling to the treasure which is coincidentally underneath the house. Ask for their help to lift the treasure. Also, there could be dead pilgrims in another time capsule. Hey, what about dead Indians? Let's say it was like 200 years ago, and, and you know they, they were really into killing Indians back then, so it's, it's basically... <laughs> The time capsule is basically a mass grave site underneath your house. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a break from calling, you know, doing the time capsule pranks. And instead, I'm going to call the people that are unpaid. I think there's like 12 of them here, people with unpaid accounts. So far, one of them has not answered. This is Paul. Hello, Paul? Yes. Hey, uh, this is Steve Dave over at the golf... Yes. How you doing? Pretty good. Look, we noticed that you're a deadbeat and you haven't paid your dues in a while. Do you think you could um, maybe get that paid up? Stop being such a loser. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when when am I? So I used to be a part of the, the mm -hmm. and I didn't play last year. Maybe once or twice, uh, but I didn't. I didn't join as a part of the men's club i don't think oh, if sure, i owe sure money did. let me know yeah you, you did and, and you forgot to un, unjoin i guess it seems like you're kind of an idiot okay you can keep talking to me that way but i don't know you very well so yeah. hopefully you're just being funny yeah well i don't know i just think it's funny that you joined a golf club and you're not even you know keeping up with your dues being kind of a loser dude yeah you can have someone else call me really that that's not very nice i'm in florida I live in multiple states. Oh, la di da! I don't I don't actively I don't actively play at very much. Why'd you join I'm then? In town, why'd, why'd you join? That. Why'd you do that? Why'd you join if you're not going to play? What are you just bad with your money? Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. Hey, it's Steve Dave from the golf. Yes, sir. And uh, we noticed you haven't paid your dues here. You're being kind of a deadbeat. Like, when do you think you're going to get those paid up? Is this some type of a joke? Oh no, it's not a joke. You just uh, you haven't paid in a while, and you. I haven't played in a while. I had surgery. I, how much do I even owe? I didn't play it one time last year. I know. Being well, kind of a deadbeat. Why? Why didn't you cancel your membership then? What do you? I don't know. I, I, I yeah. I think I might be a deadbeat. What was your last name again, sir? Uh, I didn't tell you my last name. But the, my name is Steve Dave. Steve Dave. No, Steve Dave, D A V E. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen. Why don't you just let me know what what the uh, amount is? You know, and, and maybe this deadbeat will get the fucking bill paid. 
Well, why didn't you just pay it in the first place? Are, are you just bad with your what? money? Hey, I'm having a problem with you, buddy. I'm having a problem with you, and I, and I, and I wouldn't mind meeting you in person to talk about it, okay? Oh, we don't care if you're having a problem with us. It's not like you pay us money. You're barely even a member here because you don't pay. You're just being a deadbeat. No, I... It's deadbeat, Listen, dude. deadbeats like you that make the, the rates go up for everyone. Hey, wait, so your, last, your name is Steve Day. I can't make the, wait to meet you because, no, I'm not a deadbeat. I didn't even know I owed anything. I'm having a little bit of a trouble. So, uh, you know, if, if some of my vehement uh, 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 verbiage uh, is directed at you, it, it's intended because I think, I think you asked for it, okay? Well, how much do okay. I fucking owe the, uh, the 12 Well, hey, don't curse at me, you, you low-rent person. Hey, hey. Well, you know, you're cursing at me. What? What? Hey, man, go go go! Waste your time somewhere else with somebody that's not a deadbeat. I'll call I'll call uh, wh- wh- whoever I have to and figure out what I owe. Well, I don't know what the news are. We'll just send you to, we'll, to we'll, just, we'll just send you to collections. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, okay. thank you very All much. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll you know you'll get a letter from the collection agency. Yeah, <laughs> that, that sounds great. Thank you. You're probably used to it though. You're such a deadbeat. Sir, hello? Yeah. Is, is this some type of a joke? Uh, no. I mean, you're the joke. You can't even pay your, your damn dues. You deadbeat. Hey, you know, you're, you're, you're really pissing me off, Steve, Dave. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you that right now. So, uh, you know, and that's not a good place to be, okay? You, know, you want to try and fucking trigger somebody? You've done a good job, okay? This is being recorded, by the way. So uh, I will... Uh, yeah, from the first deadbeat, it's being recorded. So, and the numbers recorded as well. So, I, I'll, I'll find out how you are, uh, who you are, and I'll hand you my money myself. Well, okay? I, I work here. Tell me uh, what. I'm not trying to hide who I am. I work here at the golf you, association. You work, you work at the golf course. Yeah. And yeah. you're calling me a deadbeat. Yeah. Well, you're being a deadbeat. You haven't paid your dues in like over a year now. Come on, learn to pay what your bills. Dues? What dues? Well, you work at the golf course. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here at the front desk. Hey, yeah, call me. Let me give you my home number. Maybe you should give me your address too. Okay. Uh, what? You don't know where the golf place is? Like, why'd you sign up here if you don't even know where what, it is? Is it a? You know, it, you know, you're you're. Uh, uh, if this is uh, I'm being hooked into something here. Then 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 you win. I gotta go. All right, bye. Where are you going? What are you gonna do? You're gonna go smoke your crack or whatever. Sir, that's that, that's pretty funny. No, I'm actually cooking dinner for the family. So. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I don't know. You're just such a deadbeat. We thought that that's maybe the kind of thing you guys do. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good stuff. Thanks, man. All right, bye, bye. All right, bye. Oh my God, these deadbeats—they're all alike. Always cursing at you, just like a deadbeat would. Hello. Hi, uh, is Brian Brown? Who's calling, please? Uh, this is Steve Dave from the golf. He's a member here. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Hello. Hello, Brian? Yeah. Hey, it's Steve Dave from the golf. Yeah, I see you. Hey there. Um, hey, we noticed that you're being kind of a deadbeat, and you haven't paid your dues in a while. Do, do you know when you'll? Right. Do you know when you'll get those paid up? <laughs> uh, when I move back to Palatine, Illinois. Well, you you can't just you you have to cancel if you're going to move away. You, you can't just expect no. us to know. <laughs> no, I I live in South Carolina now. I oh. have for six years. Well, we don't know that. You know, you, you forgot to cancel your membership, you idiot. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah, why didn't you do that? Um, consider it done then, Steve. Okay, are you going to, like, mail in a payment or something? No, I, I hope you're kidding. Oh, no, I wouldn't kid about this. You, you need to, you, 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 like, you, you have to pay your bills. What, what did you, like, uh, just... You know, like when you moved out, did you just leave your cable hooked up and your electric hooked up? And it's like, I moved yeah. out. They'll figure it out. Yeah, that's it, Steve. I mean, come that's on. That's it. Learn how to do things. Okay. 
I appreciate the call. No problem. And I I hope you're kidding because if you're not, um, you can stick it up your ass. Uh, you can't say that to me. That's something. Okay. To, <laughs> all right, he's gone. That's something a deadbeat would say. And that's all the deadbeats I could get a hold of. It seems like a few of them had their phones disconnected, just like a deadbeat would. And the rest of them just weren't answering because, you know, they're probably dodging creditors and stuff. Hello? Hi. Uh, is Art around? Who may I say is calling? Uh, I'm. This is Steve Dave. I'm with the Comptroller's Office here in Inverness. Oh, just a moment. Okay. Uh, somebody from the Comptroller's office in Inverness? Yes. Hi, Art? Yes. Hey, it's Steve Dave. I'm with the Comptroller's office. Yeah? W- were you aware that there's a time capsule buried in your yard, like underneath your house? No. Okay, yeah, it looks like um, it, it was buried there about 100 years ago, and it's due to be dug up this year. So we're going to need to do that soon. It looks like we're going to have to remove one of your trees. Well, you know something? What? Um, I I don't really care that the time capsule stays there. Oh, no, no, it has to come up. It belongs to the city. Well, then it, you're going to have to show me something official. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come by. I'm just calling to let you know they're going to come by soon. They're going to show you the paperwork, and they're going to dig up your tree, and they're going to dig a hole about 20 feet down. It's a really large okay. time capsule. Okay. It's, it's like, how much are you going to pay me? Oh, nothing. But, uh, you know, you don't have to pay. No, pa- no. Then i got to have something here that says you have the right to do this because oh. I officially own the property. Yeah, but, you know, you don't have to be an but asshole. I, but, you know, when you buried that uh, time castle, you didn't say anything about my tree. Well, I, I didn't bury it myself. It was buried there about 100 years ago. Well, so I, it, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you... You you need to give me something because if you come on this property and I don't think it's right, uh, I I'd like to have this reviewed by my attorney. Okay, well we there's look there's no reason to be an asshole about it. Like this time. What caps, do you mean? Well, you're being kind of an asshole about it. Well, no, and, not uh, yeah, I am. Do, do you know what? Because you're you're, you're going to destroy my tree and you don't want to give me any money for that. Well, we'll 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 plant a new tree there. Same thing. Well. What do you mean you plant? You know, a lot depends on which tree it is. You know, I got an oak it's, tree out here that's probably eighty years old. Yeah, Putting that's, a new tree in there isn't that's the do one. Anything. That's the one. It's the eighty-year-old oak tree. And like, do you want to know what's in this time capsule? No. Why not? Because I don't give a damn about the time capsule. Well, I think you'd change your mind if you knew what was in it. Well, do I have any rights to it? Uh, no, you can't have anything that's in no. it. It's way underground. So why, why would that? I care? Well, because it belongs to the city. You, you should just, as a, as a citizen, you should be interested in this. Well, well, obviously, we don't all have the same interests, do we? You should have known that in life. Okay, well, at least I'm not an asshole. Well, wait, just a minute. Okay. Because you're calling me an asshole? Uh-huh. That, you know... You know, if I wanted someone to do something for me, there'd be no way I'd be calling them an asshole. Well, no, I, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what your customer service skills are, but you know, calling someone an asshole doesn't really make them want to cooperate. Well, does it's, it? it's, we're not asking. Your per, we're not asking permission. We're just like, okay, there he goes. I guess he has a good point there, doesn't he? And what was with that laugh in the background? <laughs> like they were really amused by what he was saying. Man, I'm not using any of Tim Riggie's ideas here. Let's see what else there is. Say they've been chosen to open a time capsule that was buried just late last August or some other ridiculously short amount of time, maybe even a couple of hours old. That could be fun. Be like, this is a time capsule from all the way back in 2016. Can you believe it? Hello. Hello, Joe? Yeah. Hey, Joe, this is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Palatine. From what office? The comptroller's office. I'm with the city. Okay. And um, did were you aware that there's a time capsule buried underneath your property there on Gilbert? A time capsule buried underneath my property? Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, I'm not kidding at all. It's it's uh, due to be dug up uh, this uh, you know in just a couple months. It's right there in your front yard. 
And uh, there's going to be a big ceremony and everything. There's going to be a bunch of people show up. The mayor's going to going to be there. And uh, it's going to it's going to be kind of a big. Is this a joke? Oh no! I'm in California right now drinking wine. Oh, are you going to be back uh, home before the time capsule's opened? When does the time capsule open? Uh, it looks like they they were thinking about um look uh, March March twenty seventh. It looks like. Ooh, that could be a tough one. Can well, you postpone it like a, a couple days? Uh, no, this I is. Think I'm, well, this is like the an, anniversary of when it was buried. Oh wow! Um, we, you don't. How have, about if we do this? How about if we do this? I'm going to be back in town February. Uh, here at fifteenth. You're just going to have to change your plans. You look. You don't have to be there. You know, this is just going to be a big ceremony in your front yard. Uh, the mayor is going to, you know, have some words to the crowd and everything. They're going to pull the time capsule up. You mean Mr. And Jimmy Schwantz is going to be there? Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, All right. you'll, well, you'll, can you'll, you call me? Can you, can you call me back like the second week, uh, like around February twentieth or so? Sure, I'll make a note to do that to remind you to be there on yeah, uh, March twenty seventh. Around noon is when they're going to do it. Oh, my and, God. All right. Well, I'd like to be there for that. Okay. Well, it'll be on TV. It's going to be televised. It's a pretty big deal. Oh, my God. Um, they buried this time capsule okay. back in 2016, <laughs> exactly two years ago. And uh, they're going to open it up and go through the contents and see what life was like back then. See what life was when like. Was the, when was this thing planted? Uh, it, was, it, was buried there. <clears throat> it was buried there in 2016. I lived. I've been living there since 1980. I've never seen, heard about this. Yeah, well, they they did it in the uh, the the dead of the night, and and you know they just pulled up a plot of grass, dug down about. Yeah. Well, who's that? Who's that? These are the people I'm with. Listen, buddy, I'm at a white tasting right now. I gotta I gotta go. Are you drunk? I'll talk to you. I gotta talk to you later. How drunk are you? All right, bye. Oh my god. They, those people in the background were saying I just called them. Like who the fuck was that? And and like where where did he say he was? He's in California or something? Like like what are the odds I would get a hold of something? I mean this list is huge. This golf association list. There there's over a hundred numbers on it. So what the hell? How did that happen? That was crazy. And they only freaked out when I said two thousand sixteen. Why did they pick then to start start going crazy in the background? Hello, this is Greg. Hey, Greg. This is uh, Steve Dave from the city of. I'm, I'm in the comptroller's office here with Palantine. Um. Okay. And uh, I'm calling about your property there on Echo Lane. Did you know that there's a time capsule buried underneath the front yard? Um. No. Yeah, it's an old time capsule. They're planning on digging it up uh, in March. Uh, it's going to be kind of a big deal. There's going to be like a ceremony and everything. The mayor is going to show up. Uh, there's going to be a lot of t- townspeople. Sorry, what? <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm, so, I'm processing here. So, I'm, um, what uh, is uh, who who buried it? Uh, it looks like. Um, let me see. Uh, Larry, Larry buried it. And it, you know, we don't have to dig up any trees or anything. It's just a small plot of land. We just got to go straight down. It's only six feet down. And uh, uh, when. When was this buried? Uh, in 2016, March of 2016. So the mayor's going to be there. They're going to dig it up. They're going to like go through it, see what life was like back then. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When, when was it buried? Uh, 2016, 2016, 2016, March 27th. Right. So two, two years ago it was buried? Correct, yes, almost two years ago. They're going to uh, gonna dig it up on the two-year anniversary. And, and go through it. And, and what's in? Well, I mean, it's it sounds kind of silly. It's only been buried for two years, so we're, so we're wondering what life was like in 2016. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole point. It's it's a time capsule. They're gonna they're gonna go through it, go through the papers. I guess some kids from the school put some things in there. And there's some technology from that era. You know, just just basic time capsule stuff. We think you know we don't know exactly what's in it. They just have kind of a general idea from, you know, just from looking at old newspapers from back then. This just doesn't make any sense. I, mean, I, I lived here two years ago, and I don't recall anyone burying anything on my land. 
Uh, Larry, Larry did it at <clears throat> Larry did it at nighttime, and you know he just pulled up a plot of grass and and dug straight down six feet in the dead of the night, and then you know put it all back. So you know it's it was all done in secret. Hmm, that's really weird. None of this makes any sense yeah. whatsoever. Right in the middle of your front yard, but not where the tree is. You know, it's like kind of over a little bit, a little ways. He said, Can he had, you just send me like an email with this or something? Oh, sure. Or? Yeah, they're going to send you an official notice and everything. And, um, you know, they're going to, the mayor's going to need to use, uh, you know, they're going to put a podium probably on your front porch or something. Then the mayor's going to talk to people. There's going to be microphones and cameras. Lots of people there. They're in the front who yard. Is, who is the mayor? The mayor, uh, the, you know, the miss, miss, Mrs. What's her face? I, I call her Mrs. Bitch Face myself, but. You know, like yeah, who knows? You know, it changes every couple of years. Mm, mm, yeah. Uh, all I know is she's a all nightmare right. to work for. Oof! Oh my gosh. Okay, the mayor's a is a male. It's a man. No, uh, no, don't assume the mayor's gender. We, we live in it's 2008. It's not like it was in 2016. You can't just go around assuming people's gender like that. I'm going to hang up now, okay? Why? <laughs> Crap, that one just totally fell apart at the end. Maybe I should figure out who the mayor is there. This is like the outskirts of Chicago. I don't know if the mayor is the same as in Chicago or if they have their own little mayor. Maybe I should call that guy back and ask. I love how perplexed he was, though, about the whole idea of it just being two years old. That was a good one, Tim Riggie. Hello? Hi, is Jim around? Jim, hold on. Yep. Hello. Hey, Jim. Yes. Hey, this is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Palatine. Yes. And um, were you aware that there was a there's uh, underneath your house there's a time capsule buried? It was buried there about a hundred years ago. No, I'm not aware of that. Yep, and they're going to be digging it up this year. And uh, it looks like um, they're going to need to move your house. Move my house, sure. Yeah, well, they're going to do it professionally. They're going to have some 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 trucks come and you know lift up the foundation and everything, and just scoot it across the road while they while they dig up the time capsule. Well, that's very interesting. When I'm officially notified by uh, someone at the city or the village, I'll. Uh Taking consideration. Yeah, they're gonna, they're going to send you a letter, and and you don't have a choice or anything. They're just going to do it. But I'm just calling to let you know to expect the letter, and they're going to be doing this in March. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, it's not a big deal. They're just they're going to move your house over, and then they're going to move it right back. That's okay, all. Okay, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. Thanks. No, it's. Uh, <laughs> At least I got to ask if Jim was around. That doesn't happen too often. Next guy's name is Marty. Hello? Hello, Marty. Yeah. This is Doc Brown. I'm calling from the comptroller's office here in Palatine. Yeah. And um, I'm calling to let you know that, I mean, did you know that there is a time capsule buried underneath your house? There's what? A time capsule. They put a time capsule underneath your house back in 1885, and it looks like they're going to be digging, yeah. digging that up this year. Um, here in uh, September. You're calling from where? I'm calling from the comptroller's office. And is this a fake call? Oh, no, no, this is not a fake call. Uh, I'm just calling to let you know. They're going to send you an official uh, notice in the mail and everything. I just thought I'd give you a call to let you know to expect that so you wouldn't think it's junk mail or anything. Uh, how did you get this number? Uh, cause I'm with the, the comptroller's office. We have everyone's number here, but they're going to be a uh, cell phone number. What? This is a cell phone number. Yours is a cell this phone number? This number's not listed. Okay. Well, no, this they, number's not listed. they have everyone's number. You, you can't just have an unlisted number with the city. Like we, we have every number. We have several numbers here on the, okay. on your record, on your file. Your file. Okay. Your file has everything. It has your voice print. It has your handwriting samples. It has everything. I'm with the comptroller's office. Uh, yeah, this seems like a fake call. Oh, it's not <laughs> a fake call. But listen, 
Um, it's in your front yard. They're just going to be digging up. They're going to have to remove one of your trees. And no, no. What do no. you mean? No, 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 no! I'm not asking. You're not going to dig. Not going to dig up my yard. No, I'm not asking permission. Not I'm, gonna, I'm calling to let you know this is happening. We, we're, we no, we, no, you're not going to dig up. You're not going to dig up my yard. That time capsule no, is I'm there gonna, bef- gonna, before your you're house not gonna was. Dig up my yard. That time capsule has Sorry, squatters you're rights. Gonna, you're not going to dig up. You're not going to dig up my yard. Well, it's not me doing um, it. I'm an office worker, idiot. It's it's going to be the construction people. You don't 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 start calling me an idiot. Well, you're being so, kind of you. one because. You don't understand. Man, I, I really ran out of steam on my Doc Brown impression there. My, my horrible Doc Brown impression. That didn't last very long at all. I was going to tell him that there was uh, letters from Western Union inside the time capsule. Maybe a hoverboard. I don't know. Hello. Hey, Jerry. This is um, Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office. Yeah. And... Uh, did you were you aware that there's a time capsule buried underneath your house? It was uh, buried there about 150 years ago. You got the wrong person. Oh no, you live at way. Yeah. Yep, yep. We've got we've got your record right here, Jerry. Um, yeah, there's a time capsule. It was buried in, underneath your house way back in uh, 1854, and it's coming up on the anniversary. They're gonna unbury that this year. They're gonna dig it up. There's going to be a... Yeah, right. What? Ooh. Jerry? The house is, was built in 1997. Right, yeah. The time capsule was there before the house. We, we know your house didn't exist back in 1853. We're not stupid. But, yeah, they're going to be, uh, going to be digging that up. This uh, looks like in March. And we'll be sending you an official notice in the mail and everything, a letter. So make sure you read that. Yeah. But uh, there's going to be a big ceremony and everything. The mayor's going to come out. There's going to be cameras. You're not talking very much, Jerry. Hello? Nope. What? You're right. What, what's the matter? Send it in the mail. Yeah, Talk we're, to you later. We're gonna send, we're going to send it in the mail. Jerry. Man, Jerry sucked. He wouldn't ask questions or anything. And I know I keep accidentally saying Palatine instead of Palatine. Or is it Palatine? No, it's Palatine. I don't know. It's, it's some suburb of Chicago. Hello? Hello, Gary? Yes. Hi, this is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Palatine. Yes. And I'm calling to let you know we're going to be uh, doing some digging on your property uh, coming up here in March. Uh, were, yes. were you aware that there's a time capsule buried underneath your property? No. Yep, they buried it there in 1853, and it's due to be dug up. It's come up, coming up on the anniversary. So there's going to be a, a, a big to-do about it. You know, the, the mayor is going to be there. There's going to be cameras, and they're going to pull it up and open up this time capsule and see what all's inside of it. And why is that on my? And why is that in my, in my lawn? Yeah, well, no, it's underneath your house. We're gonna have to move your house over. Uh huh. But, but yeah, it, it was there before you built your house, so we have rights to it. You know, we we just it's not a big deal. We're just gonna pull up your house by the foundation with trucks, uh-huh. and we're gonna move it out into the street while we dig it up. Oh yeah. And then uh, you know we'll put it right back. You you won't know that a thing. Ha- it'll look just the same. Yeah, I think you're dreaming. Oh, no, 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 this is definitely happening. (laughs) What's so funny? What's so funny? Yeah, you're laughing. Is that you would even, that that somebody would even come up with such an idiotic uh, idea? Well, it's Tim Riggie's, it's Tim Riggie's idea. He works here for the city. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to have a serious lawsuit on your hands. Oh no, we won't. The, the time capsule was there before you, so it has uh-huh. more. It has more rights than you do. Okay. Well, you have a good day now. Thanks. You too. Bye. Hello. Hi. Is Billy around? Who is this? Uh, this is Steve Dave with the Comptroller's office here in Chicago. You're calling on a Sunday. Correct. Yeah. We tried calling during the week, and you guys weren't weren't answering. It's like you're dodging calls or something. 
No, we're not dodging calls. He had surgery. Yeah, likely excuse. But is oh, he? Is he is and he, I'll show you. Show him the scar. Um, no, thank you. That's gross. Can, can you just put him on the phone? Stop being so difficult. Who are you? I'm with the comptrollers. I already told you this is Steve Dave. I don't. I have never heard of you. Why would you have heard of me? I'm just an office worker here with the city. Oh, well, why don't you call back? Because he's sleeping right now. Okay. He had rotator cuff surgery. I see. And um, I can bring a note for the doctor. No, I don't need that. I just, I think it, it sounds pretty fake. But I can tell you what the well, call's about. You sound, you sound fake. Oh, you, your face sounds fake, lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess we both enjoyed that. Hello. Hi, is Robert around? Yes, he is. Just in place. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold Hello, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello, it's okay. I forgive you. This is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Palatine. Yep. And um, we're going to be doing some digging on your property coming up here in March. Did you know that there's a time capsule underneath your house? was buried there about 100 years ago. No, you've got to be kidding. Oh, no, no, I'm completely serious. It's been there long before your house, and um, they're just, they're, they're, it's coming up due to, it was buried there in 1918, and uh, it's coming up on the, on the anniversary. They're going to be digging that up. Where's it at? Uh, it's uh, right around the front of your house, so we don't have to move your uh, house or anything. We just have to remove your porch. And dig down and then sure. kind of underneath, and that way we don't have to move your house. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they'll pay for a new porch. It, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll put it all back. You won't have to worry about it. But there's going to be a big ceremony. The mayor's going to be there. There's going to be cameras. A lot of people are going to be invited. It will let you huh. guys come since, you know, you, you live there and everything. Really? Yep, yep. There's going to be... Uh, there's going to be food, snacks. There's going to be it's going to be like a block party basically. Your whole street's going to be uh roped off and everything. But and when is what is this? Hold on one second, please. Uh, okay, me? Make a lower. Make a little lower. Order his wife to turn down the TV, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. I yeah. Okay. Um so this was this was buried uh, in 1918. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Back in uh, March of 1918. So it, it's a pretty. Time capsule. Yeah, it's a really large one. You know, it's a, it's a unusually large. It's about the size of a truck, a big truck. Well, where, where are you calling from right now? Where are you at? Uh, I'm actually calling from home. We tried calling during the week, so I just took your number home with me and. You know, because we, we don't usually work on Sundays, but we, I just needed to get a hold of you. They're going to send you an official uh, notice in the mail about it. So we just wanted to really? let you know to be on alert, you know, be on the lookout for that. And, and what, let me write this down. What is your name, please? Uh, my name yeah. is Steve Dave. Say it again. Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, and then Dave. Oh, D-A-Y-S? Yep, D-A-Y-S. Oh, huh. because on the, yeah. on the TV it came up U.S. Postal Service. Oh, yeah, it's because it's a government cell phone. It's all linked through the same system. You know, when I call out, it, go, it goes through the system, through the government system. Really? Okay. Because yep. I, I thought you were calling about a package that somehow disappeared yesterday. But anyway, oh, uh, no. I, have to call the, I have to call the post office in the morning. Oh, yeah. But uh, th that's, re that's really something. How big a, how big a capsule? Uh, it's, a, it's the size of one of those. Bi it's, it's basically the size of a U-Haul truck, it looks like. And really? It, yep, yep. Your whole front yard is going to have to come up. But um, you know they'll they'll be quick about it. They'll they'll get it all rebuilt and put all the dirt back and and replace your porch and any any windows that are broken and bushes. And the side too. I mean the, the grass. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll look just like it did before. It, it, this will all be in the thing that you get in the mail. And uh, it looks like uh, the the time capsule. It, it contains just you know a bunch of letters and. Stuff from back in the day, back in 1918, uh, dead, dead Indians, um, like some stuff from like the local elementary schools, huh. photographs, lots of dead Indians, though. I guess there's a lot of dead Indians in it, because, you know, they didn't really like Indians back then. Oh, God, this is really unbelievable. Yep. 
So, yeah, it's, so it's, it's weird by, that, by what you're by what you're looking at, Steve. You think it's underneath our front porch? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of halfway between the front porch and just kind of in the yard part. So your sidewalk's going to have right. to come up. We'll probably be uh, chopping through a lot of tree roots. Hopefully, that won't kill the trees. Uh, yeah, well, um, they they just put a new parkway tree in a couple of years ago. So. Oh, that's good. It's not old then. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So, but but uh, um, there's something I'm going to tell you something. There's there's uh, underground pipe that I had put in about uh, eight or nine years ago with mm-hmm. the village's permission. I got a permit and everything else like that. Uh, it's coming uh, on an angle across my front yard. Uh oh. And uh, it's uh, you know the sump pumps comes out of the back of the house. And then they then they went down about thirty inches, and then they went out to the side of the yard, to the east side of the yard, and then on down the side of the house. We'd like to have four inch or six inch green pipe, you know, that plastic pipe. Oh yeah, yeah, that's stuff. Uh-huh. Yep. And uh, so that goes on an angle all the way down, like oh, across the yard, like on a forty five degree angle, into the sewer in front of the house. Well, hopefully they can wedge the U haul truck around that. And pull it up. I'm, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Maybe they'll just take the pipe yeah. out temporarily and then put it back in later. Yeah. So what? Uh, um, so, but how big is this time capsule? That's what I was asking. Oh, it's about the size of a, a large truck, like a U-Haul truck. Oh, it is. It's that big. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. It, it's filled with dead Indians. Oh my God! This doesn't sound right. No, no, it's it's just part of the time capsule. Like, there's a bunch of different sections of the time capsule, but I know a big part of it was like uh, dead Indians. They used to, I, I don't know, they 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 had them up. They, they they were like up there to like send a message to the rest of the Indians back yeah. then. You know, not to come around and scalp children because that was a big problem back in the day. Is this, is so, this somebody I know? Is this somebody I know, or is this a, this a oh no, a I don't. PS? No, I don't believe I know you. My name is Steve Dave. I'm with the Comptroller's office. Comptroller of of what? Uh, Palatine. Oh. Huh. Yep, yep, yep. It's not a big deal. You know, they'll they'll have it all back back in. You know, they'll have your porch back. It, it'll be all put back together. You know, by at when least. Will I, when will I uh, be getting all this notification in the mail? Uh, it should be coming this week. If you haven't gotten it already, they sent it out on Friday. And uh, when, to, when will they start doing this work? Uh, it's gonna, the the big um, ceremony part's going to be in on March twenty seventh. Um, in you know just on March twenty seventh, so they're they're going to come out probably the week before and start tearing start tearing your porch well, I'm, out. I'm not, well, okay, all right. Hey, can what, you tell that your phone can you tell what, that lady in the background tell tell that lady in the background to shut up? Pardon me. Could you just tell her to sh- tell her to shut up because we were talking? Tell that woman. Well, to- that's, not, that's not very nice to say. What is your phone number? Uh, it's on caller ID. Um, it's seven seven three five zero. You said it came up on your TV, right? Yeah. Well, I don't have it. You know, it's not on the TV anymore. So you're calling, and, you're, but you're calling from your home. Where do you live, Steve? Well, I'm, it's, I'm calling from you know the city's. Uh, it's a cell phone. It goes through the system and everything. But I don't you have. Live to, in Palatine. Yeah, yeah, I live here in town. Hmm. But um, all right, well, I'll wait for the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, the paperwork work will probably be there on Monday, maybe Tuesday. I'm surprised it's not there already. We sent we sent it out on Friday. Yeah. It's probably because you don't have the okay. uh, the the wheelchair ramp for the postman, the new postman. On your porch. Oh, it sounds like a weird phone call. Because he's disabled. No, it's not a weird phone call. It's just, uh, you know, it's a weird situation. That time capsule, it's been there for 100 years now. And it's All right, well, I'll wait, for, I'll wait for the paperwork. Kind of a large one. A you know, bunch of dead Indians underneath your house. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, we'll see. But, I mean, that's not a problem, though. You know, the big ceremony and everything. Big buffet tables out well, in your lawn. Let's, let's see if I get. Let's see if I get the paperwork. Block party. Well, the paperwork's gonna be there. I'm telling you, it's gonna be there. Like, why would I lie? You're acting like this is like not real. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to believe it isn't real. Why would you say that? Because it just doesn't. It just doesn't sound right. Just because I. Mean, I just because. The, the, the thing that's buried. The thing that's buried is the size of a truck. 
Yeah, it's a large time capsule. They did things differently back in 1918. Hey, tell that lady to, to shut the fuck up. That lady in the background, just just tell her to be quiet. I don't appreciate your uh, your language. Well, she keeps talking though. She keeps talking while you're That's on the phone. Okay. No, it's not. That's you're, okay. Thanks for calling. I'll wait for I'll wait for the paperwork. You're, Thank you're, you very you're on much. the you're on the phone. Tell her to be quiet. You be quiet. No, you be quiet. <laughs> Motherfucker. Who does he think he is telling me to be quiet? I love that he believed that one right up to the very end. And he was completely okay with it, you know? <laughs> Just taking his porch out, disconnecting this new pipe he had put in. That sounds like a huge mess to have in your front yard for a really long time. But I'm sure now he is very relieved that his front yard is fine. It's not going to be disassembled. He's not going to lose his porch. He must just be feeling the, the most relief he's ever felt right now. And, and his breakfast tastes better than it's ever tasted before. Brad, Brad. Brad, Brad. Dun, 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 Oi, dun, Brad. Dun, 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 dun. You need, we need to probably stop telling women to go back into the kitchen. Because think of it, a, a lot, there's, there's a lot of lady inventors out there, such as Mary Anderson, who invented the windscreen wiper. There's a Hedy Lamar. There's... That's Ruth true. Handler who invented the Barbie doll. I mean, there's actually quite a lot of people you could think of. A lot. A of woman invented the windshield wiper? That's crazy. Lady inventors. I didn't know that. And been, been enjoying your show, Brad. And let's, let's, let's see. Let's, let's, okay, let's keep telling women to go back into the kitchen. Yeah, why I, not? I bet you she was in the kitchen when she invented the windshield wiper. I bet she was, like, driving to the grocery store. I mean, she was having her husband drive her to the grocery store to get groceries to put into the kitchen. And she's like, I hate that my husband makes me stick my head out the window and tell him when something's approaching because he can't see through the windshield. I bet you that's how it happened. Glory has glory holes and the butthole winkers here. Listen up, dinglings. Come on. Come all. Experienced gin food players we call. Neener, neener. Go suck on a wiener. Hey, Roy, it's Kirsty, your favorite radio producer. I um, guess. So my car broke down this past week, and I've been walking... Did it get dinged? ...an hour and, like, ten minutes to work every morning, it's which okay. has been fantastic. But uh, it's given me a great chance What are you doing away from the kitchen? ...listen to the uh, show and catch up on old episodes when you don't have anything new. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I've only done, like, after this show, I've only done four shows this week. I've really been slacking off this week. I've been here since, uh, like, summer 2016, so i got a lot of shit to catch up on. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Work. Good listening to the show. Cactus, cactus. That's hilarious. You have to walk every day. Isn't there a bus or something? Maybe you just live in the type of town that I do, where the buses come, like, three times a day or something. I think. I don't know. I don't take the bus. I've heard it's pretty bad, though. Hey, Brad. Uh, big Moist. So you Ew. sounded a little discouraged today with the show where you call and have people say wacky things on the radio and Walmart and Bed Bath and & Beyond. Yeah. And I have no idea why. The show is freaking hilarious. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I realized that like in post-editing. Like I think while it was happening, I'm like, wow, this just kind of sucks. I should just delete this whole thing. But then I listened to it again, and I was pretty amused with it. So. <laughs> it's okay. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. On the other walkie-talkies asking what the hell are they doing. There was managers running over to hang up the phone or take it from them and ask yeah. who you were. I want to do that again, but on a live show. I want you guys to have me tell the people things to say into the radios. I think that could be a lot great. of fun. I don't know why you seem like it didn't go well or anything. But, uh, yeah, you literally explained to this one lady that you were pranking her, and she still went ahead and did it a few yeah, seconds later. It's weird. It's just baffling. But, uh, And yeah. then that one lady, she was high as socks. I just want to let you know, don't be sad. And, uh, I'm not. It's okay. You have been putting out Thank shows you, a though. lot lately, pumping them out. Makes you want to pump something inside you. But, uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Take All right. Care. Thanks for that. I'm going to do some more of those. I'm also going to do some more of the, um, like, like don't worry, Tim Riggy. I'm going to do some more of these time capsule prank calls because i didn't use hardly any of your ideas and that's another one i think i should try and do on a live show is time capsule pranks and speaking of things that i've been meaning to get to and i just keep putting it off and i really need to hurry up with this one i need to do tourette tv's idea he wanted me to fuck with sears and i'm really going to do that tourette tv i promise i think i only have a couple months left i think they're about to go out of business forever i think i may have read that i have until the end of march so i've got to do that at least you know within the next month or so i'll do it i promise I saw your paycheck, and when I asked you to listen to the song, you better listen to it, or else I won't sign your paycheck anymore. 
crap. So go listen to it, or else. What are we talking about? And if you don't remember, go fuck yourself. All right. Okay. Thanks for the voicemail. It sounded like it started in mid-sentence, so maybe he thought it was recording the whole time. Maybe he was talking over the outgoing message or something. Hey, Brad. Um, yeah, so I was watching uh, Worski Live, which is a, a podcast here on uh, YouTube. Mm-hmm. They're one of the biggest podcasts on YouTube, whatever. There was like about, but there was only about like uh, 2,500 people because it was towards the end of the show. But I paid $50 to send a super chat saying, uh, asking the host of the show, Andy Worski, to read a message that said uh, that, uh, um, like, just telling you to send some love over to the Snowplow, Snowplow Show. Snowplow and, Show? Uh, yeah, so I paid 50 bucks and he read the message. So to 2,500 people saw the message and read it. So maybe they'll check it out. So, Yay. I mean, I wondered you know, why there were suddenly so, 2,500 new listeners to, to my last show. It was crazy. So now I don't feel guilty about watching the shows for free and not being a Patreon member. <laughs> oh, yeah. So consider season. <laughs> All right. Bye, Brian. Thanks. Check, check. I didn't really get 2,500 extra people. But I appreciate that. Even though you could have taken that 50 bucks and just had yourself a year of Patreon and gotten yourself a bunch of extra shows and stuff. But whatever. Just give it to some other guy. I don't care. Hey, Brad. I'm going to put my phone in. Hey, I mean, Greg. I just started to listen to your, the beginning of your show about the tie collars and the tie pods and tie pods. And- By the way, Greg, sorry I didn't put voicemails on the beginning of today's show. I totally forgot. I was totally going to do that. But I forgot. You know, no, 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 no. No human, you know, uh, no human test trials. No human doing that. Please don't. Because the main reason I donate is because your ethicalness. Because your ethics. <laughs> Come on. You know, you know that- I wasn't really going to do that. I always do that at the beginning of shows. I say we're going to convince Walmart employees to tip soda machines on top of themselves. Because it'll be funny. I'm not going to contribute to this weird tide shit that's happening. The reason why I donate. And in my it's vote... Okay, Greg. I donate for you doing clean, honest pranks. That's why I do- well, I wouldn't I say they're honest. They're pretty much all lies. For you. That's why I donate to you. I wouldn't say they're clean, because I'm always telling people to shut their kids the fuck up and making weird sex jokes at people. Please, so. no tie pod pranks. No, nothing okay. that does with humans no doing tie something pod, to I themselves promise. like that. Ingesting anything. Unless it's just really funny. Please. And then I'll leave them in the show next time. That's something I'm totally against, and uh, I hope that your show doesn't involve that. I hope this is just a prank on me. Yep, you fell for it, you big dummy. Thank you, bye. And now I'm going to delete your other two voicemails that you left immediately after this one, mostly because they're really, really long. Two and a half minutes each, what the hell, Greg? Here, I'll I'll play part of this one. Let's see what this is. Hey, Brad. Yeah, I do a lot of friggin' voice calls to you on the weekends, so screw me. Cut it out. Um, I'm talking for all those sane people out there that love your ethical prank calling. I didn't do you it. You are so into ethics. I didn't do prank it. Calling. You've got rules for yourself. And I love yeah. that. And that's why I My rule is stay out of jail, hopefully. Donates, because you have ethical, ethical. Clean. Prank calling. I honest, love that. Honest and clean. And, and, and even when you feel you've gone overboard, you even call pe- people back and tell them, yes, I prank called you. I'm a guy. I'm sorry. I prank called you. Yeah. That's so much ethical. I don't that, sound that, that sad about it. That's what turns though. us all on as far as I know. Ethical. I actually do that every once in a while, uh, you know, like off the air. I don't even tell you guys. I call people back, though, and just say, LOL, just kidding. <laughs> it was funny, wasn't it? Hey, Brad, it's Dawson, a long-time listener here. Laugh at him some more. I just got done watching your, uh, excuse me, listening to your episode 434, the Walkie Talkie Test Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you, uh, you know, I've been involved in radios my whole life. I'm an amateur radio operator and whatnot. Nerd. And uh, I have found out in during my life that most of your Walmart uh, do not have a whole lot of radios around the store with the employees and such. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, I used to work at Target back in the 90s. We all carried walkie-talkies, like every single person. And I've seen Walmart employees with walkie-talkies. I just figured they were the same way. Like, why wouldn't they have them? Lots of stores have them. Usually just the managers that have radios. If you want to uh, do the more of the walkie-talkie pranks like you did on that episode, I would suggest you call Sam's Club which is also owned by Walmart. Okay. Nearly every employee in Sam's Club has a radio, and they usually have it on full blast, exactly how you like it for your pranks. Nice. All right, Brad, keep up with the good work. 
Bye-bye. Just like when people are on speakerphone and I can yell crazy things at them for the whole room to hear. Someone in the PLA Facebook group mentioned that Walmart uses public frequencies that anybody is allowed to broadcast on, which I didn't realize. I thought they you know, had their own licensed frequencies that you weren't supposed to get on. So all you have to do is get on a radio that broadcasts on their frequencies and figure out the secret broadcasting code, the PL tones, and you can play on their radios all day and it's not even illegal. I think that's what this guy in the group claims. He's probably just trying to trick us, though, get us arrested. Hey, what up, ninja? Hey. Anyways, I have a really good idea. Call apartment complexes and tell them uh, you want to know how much the pet deposit is because uh, your pet beaver uh, just uh, came in, was just delivered today, and you uh, are setting up a beaver sanctuary in your bedroom. Yeah. So, yeah, that'd be tight. I'm going to do that. Anyways. It's been way are, too long since I've done apartment prints. I posted my call, Brad. That's tight. Did I? But anyways. Your show's pretty cool. Found it on YouTube. Yup, yup. Anyways. Okay. Have all the motherfuckery, fuckery fun in the world. All right, bye. Bye. Man, that message sucks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that made it all worth it, hearing you hate your message. Thank you for the message. I wish more messages were like that. That's like when that old man earlier today forgot how to hang up the phone and we just got to listen to him pace around the house and figure out what the scam was. Hey, I had an idea for your uh, shopping spree at 7-Eleven type gag. Okay. Um, how about you have one of the uh, real recipients, uh, the customers, whatever the fuck you want to call them, you have them rush to go try to stick two mint Mentos into a two liter of Diet Coke as fast as they can. Okay. As fast as they can. All right, later. That has actually been done quite a few times on... Either, I, I forget which, but either Carlito's show or Dwight's show. They were doing a bunch of that a couple years ago. And it was pretty funny. Like, one of them, like, I mean, they were just getting the employees to do them, not the customers. But I bet you you could get customers to do that, too. Like, Carlito had them, like, lining them up in, in their hands and, like, dropping a bunch in all at once instead of just two. It was crazy stuff. I wish I knew where to link to, to, to so you guys could hear those. It's somewhere on one of those shows. I don't know where. Hey, Roy, it's the real Gex Colo here. Glad to see that there's been no sign of that fake Gex anymore. At least, I don't know. I don't, so I, I'm, I'm almost like caught up. Uh, I've been listening to everything from the very beginning and, uh, I'm on, Gex I'm, disappeared from the chat room too, from the Discord. And almost to 2016. I'll be arrested. listening to your new shit soon. Anyway, I just say thanks. Uh, I started my own podcast that you're on right now whether you know it or not Fuck. um that uh, i realized that if i just take all How'd the you get my voice you were doing four years ago and then do them on my show no one will realize that i'm not funny enough to think of uh original ideas for what a great calls. idea thanks for the content uh roy Anytime. rb uh, whatever uh talk to you later bye i feel so violated now bradley carter this is a prosecution speaking hello on episode language of the Madhouse radio show that aired on June 26, 2015. Oh, shit. What did I do? At time, time stamp 3.32.45 near the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Three hours, 32 minutes, and 45 seconds to be exact. You sang the song Too Legit to Quit with Neon and Carlito. No. You sang the song. <laughs> Recently, you claimed you never heard the song and didn't know the song. Well, I know the chorus of it. Where you just say too legit to quit over and over. I don't I have no idea what the rest of it sounds like. Bradley, this is a serious offense. You are under watch as you know. Crap. This is against your probation. Crap, we crap. Will see crap. you in court, Bradley. I hope to hell that you have The judge is gonna do the too legit to quit hand signals to me. Some sort of defense because you will be locked up for a long time. A long time, Bradley. Crud. Carter. Crud, crud, crud. Bradley crud. A. Carter. Go yep. listen to it. Okay. Bye. Thanks you for the voicemail. Right. I know you're right. Everyone go check that out. Listen to my lies, I guess. Arby, I forgot to uh, to to push my to push my show on your show. So if you don't want me to do that, and just don't play this voicemail, and no one will know well, that I'm a scumbag. Too late now. I'm not gonna. Uh, my podcast go back. that I I play some songs that you've made and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, I was wondering why you didn't promote your own show if you're talking about it so much. What the hell? Whatever. Big dummy. It is radio .phallic .io. Uh My show called Just the Tip. Uh, okay. Phallic is P-H-A-L-L-I-C, since I know your listeners aren't the smartest. Um, but I love you, Brad. Bye.
Bye. Radio.phallic.io. None of you will be able to go to it because you don't know how to spell. I'll put a link in the show notes, though. That'll help everyone. Hey, speaking of other shows that you guys should listen to, like for the past three days now, I have been listening to shows made by Randall Thor. He's one of the occasional sponsors of the Snowplow Show. And I've never really listened to his stuff before, but he does these soundscape things. I forget what he calls them, but it's a lot of music and a lot of clips played behind the music. And he plays a lot of PLA clips. And there was one part where he was just reading uh, tweets by Michelle. He wouldn't say who it was, but I know exactly who it is because I know how Michelle talks. Most of you don't know who Michelle is. She's some crazy lady on Twitter that blocked me. I don't get to see her tweets anymore. But I tweeted about him this weekend, and I linked to a certain show. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the show notes if you guys want to listen to it, because he was using uh, clips from the old um, PLA telephone network interface machine thing, you know, my asterisk system, and people could call into it, and there was a bunch of weird options, like there was a choose-your-own-adventure thing, and old phone recordings, and answering machine hacking... And that all went away when I got raided by the FBI because they took the computer. And, you know, I've gotten it back since, but I haven't touched it. But while I was listening to that episode that had that stuff in it, I dragged that computer out and I hooked it up. I got it on the network and I'm trying to figure out the best way to integrate it into my new asterisk system. It's going to be a big pain in the ass to do, but I've started the process. I've been copying sound files over and I think I'm going to get the TNI machine going again. And once I do that, I will let you guys know what the number is. Or I can just tell you the number now. It's going to be 505-796-5789. Right now, that is one of the request line numbers. But I think that's the best one to use for the TNI machine. I can make it go to the request line, too, if you push that option. But Randall Thor reminded me of how much I really liked doing that TNI machine thing. Thanks, Randall Thor. I'll have links to it in the show notes. It's pretty good stuff. I've listened to at least 10 of his shows over the past three days. Been playing it in the background while I get things done around here. Hello, Brad. Um, thank you for sending me the book in the mail. You're welcome. I'm really sorry Gloria. I gave you the wrong address like twice or once or whatever. It's okay. But I appreciate it, and I won't ever give that book as a gift again because I realize people suck. And God damn it, Gloria. the only people who love me in life are like you and yeah. the callers and my boyfriend. I actually have a boyfriend now, so weird. I know. Yeah. But so anyway. Weird. Uh, why don't you fucking do some, like, pet smart calls and tell people their fucking dogs died already? And I have I said, been. I've been doing that, like, all year, and you don't listen anymore, so you haven't heard it. You call up, like, it's some black fault. lady. She'd probably start, like, screaming and hollering about a lawsuit. Oh, or, you know what, do some true, true green calls, because we've been listening to a lot of those lately. My boyfriend absolutely loves the show now. So, anyway, love you. Bye. Bye, Gloria. Glad you got your new PLA book in the mail. Hey, RB. Um... I think we got spoiled having so many shows because now I'm like stuck in traffic. I'm taking an alternate route home and I'm like, wow, this would be the perfect time to hear a snowplow show, but there's no new show. Listen to an old one. Damn, hobo, what am I paying for? I mean, come on. Sorry. Uh, Only four shows this week. I'm such a slacker. But hey, on the, the bright Maybe I'll try and do another one tonight. I'll I stay up late. I the bar called Cactus. Literally just called Cactus. Um, Wow. I didn't feel like stopping in, though. That's nice. But that might be good to call. Let me know. I could call them up, number. and I could be like, Cactus, and they'll be confused and hang up, and it'll be so funny. All right, that is the end of episode 435. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Nikki D, for sponsoring today's show, being the corporate sponsor, the corporate supervisor, whatever I'm supposed to say. And I'm barely even behind on the, the old sponsors anymore, the ones I've been behind on forever. I'm up to November of 2017 now. The people who didn't get mentioned in November are James S4, Lion9, Nikish, Kuraz, Jamie F, Lucklight, Rob Zombie Stark, Alexander P, Matt Z, The Real Crazy Kraz, Robert S, Jason B, Henrik, Gobi, CNC Wizard, Sean L, Miguel F, Worsty, Michael D, Ian B, Buster C, Christopher, Julian J, William K, Todd L, and Fun Society Arcade. Thanks all of you and everyone else who supports the show over on Patreon, patreon.com slash phone losers. You're the reason that all of this stuff is still going on. It's all your fault. I stayed home from work, doing renovations, replacing the carpets in my basement. I noticed a hatch in the corner of the floor, so I lifted the latch and I opened the door. The hatch door opened into my amazement There was a tunnel leading somewhere beneath my basement Anticipation, my heart was racing So I jumped in the hole in the corner of my basement I'm under your house calling from a 
tunnel Could you send me some food? My stomach's starting to crumble There's a lot of stuff down here I need you to help me Take it to the surface And sell it on eBay Now I'm down in the hole that I just jumped in And there's tunnels leading in every direction It's like an underground city down here So I'm hoping you could just lend me your ears There's a big waterfall, old computers and cars My phone's light's not so bright but I found some cigars They smell real nice, I think they're from Cuba There's an old car down here and the horn goes Hallelujah! Under your house Calling from a tunnel Could you send me some food? My stomach's starting to crumble There's a lot of stuff down here I need you to help me Take it to the surface And sell it on eBay I've been walking for a while and I'm feeling kinda nervous when I finally got reception My phone said I'm under your house, that's why I'm calling you And I hope that you can help me find my way back home or maybe send a canary There's a guy down here and I think he's a hobo He makes me suck his dick before release, no homo There's a chest in the corner full of gold doubloons So don't you call the cops, I don't trust those buffoons under your house Calling from a tunnel Could you send me some food? My stomach's starting to crumble There's a lot of stuff down here I need you to help me Take it to the surface And sell it on eBay Got a broom handle I found And I banging around On the ceiling in the hopes that somebody Oh wait, what's that sound? Oh no, robots Because you don't work for the city, because if you worked for the city, you'd give me your last name. Well, you didn't ask for my last name. What's your last name, Roy? I'm not going to tell you. Exactly. Bye.